Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? If there's one thing Apple loves more than making a proprietary connector, it's selling you an adapter for this connector once they discontinue it. But what if I told you there was a connector that Apple made way back in the early days of the iPod that only lasted for two years before being abandoned? Even weirder, Apple did not make an adapter for this. That being said, a couple of third-party companies did, and they're so rare, it took me over four years with a saved search on eBay to find one. In this video, we'll take a look at a couple of these accessories, and we'll test out the adapter with its intended purpose of making them functional through a 30-pin connector of an iPod. But stick around for the end because we're going to get crazy. I'm going to slap on a 30-pin to lightning adapter at the end of this daisy chain, and we'll see if we can get these old accessories working with the latest version of the iOS, which, as of the making this video, is 26.2. Let's get started. Okay, so this connector is a combination of a four-pole audio jack that is not the standard four-pole TRRS jack we use today, and a little nub over here that has connectors on both sides. Collectively, they're known as the remote port connector, or sometimes the 9-pin connector. More on that in a minute. This came out in 2003 with the third generation iPod, and was also present on the Mini, the fourth gen iPod, and the iPod Photo, before being discontinued and not used in 2005 with the first gen Nano and the fifth gen video iPod. They were mostly wired and wireless remote controls, like this one here from Apple, FM transmitters, and microphones. The market wasn't that big. I assume that's why Apple didn't bother to make an adapter. This one here is from Targus. Like I said, it took me over four years to get this. Let's take a look at it real quick. You plug in the two connectors here, and it outputs here with 30 pin. Uh, one cool thing about it was not only was it for the newer iPods, that didn't have the remote port anymore, but if you had like a fourth gen one or a mini, you could actually plug in two accessories at the same time. One on the remote port connector at the top and another one of these nine pin connectors through the adapter. Anyway, let's take a look at using these two accessories with a 30 pin iPod and then we'll get to uh, the meat of this video, which is let's see if it works today with the latest version of the iOS. Okay, so first we'll start with the FM transmitter. I have this old lightning dock here, which has a radio in it, so we use that. And I've got it plugged into the last traditional iPod that had a 30-pin connector. Let's fire that up. And we'll put in the FM transmitter, see if we get any power on it. Hey, it lit up. There we go. All right, let's fire up a song. Turn on the radio. It's working. And it sounds about as terrible as you remember. But hey, we didn't know any better in 2003. We didn't have Bluetooth and CarPlay and such. But yeah, totally works for its intended purpose all the way up to the 2010 6th Gen Nano. Let's try out the remote control now. Okay, so here's Apple's remote control with this connector. This came with some of the larger capacity, higher priced third generation iPods, but you could also buy it separately. And they actually had one very similar to this for the first and second gen Firewire based iPods. They had their own proprietary connector with a big ring at the bottom of the audio jack. But that never opened up an accessory market and I've never seen any kind of adapter for that. It really was just Apple's remote. Very similar to this, but different connector. So what you do is plug it into your iPod and then you can plug your headphones into the top part here, which I've got plugged into this little speaker here. So let's fire it up. Yep, skipping songs works. Play pause works. You'll notice though when I move the volume connector, while well, you'll see it change on the iPod screen, it does not change the volume actually on the speaker. That's because when audio comes out of the 30 pin connector, it's like a line out. It's just steady and static and you're expected to adjust it with the amplification of your powered speaker. However, if you run the audio out of the headphone jack 
instead of out of here, then when you adjust the volume with this control, you will actually be able to increase and decrease it. So for its intended purpose, this adapter is working perfectly. Like I said, there was a third type of accessory, uh, microphones, and the adapter specifically says on the packaging, it doesn't work with the microphone. So it only works with the wired and wireless remote controls and FM transmitters. But for its intended purpose, as advertised, this is working all the way up to the 2010 6th Gen iPod Nano. Now, let's go into modern times. Okay, so the only lightning device I have that can actually run iOS 26, or I should say iPad OS 26, is this 8th Gen iPad. So I have the Targus 9-pin to 30-pin adapter here, and it is plugged into Apple's 30-pin to lightning adapter. Very important to have Apple's adapter for this here. And let's see if it works with the FM transmitter. Plug it in here, we'll see if we get power. Yep, we sure do. Let's give it a whirl. Turn on the radio. Yep, it's working. And all that glorious FM transmitter quality music. Very cool. All the way into 2026, these 2003 accessories are working. Let's try Apple's remote control out. Okay, so I have Apple's remote connected here. Let's see how this works. Let's start it up. So far, so good. Skipping tracks. No problem. And just like before, we're not going to be able to adjust the volume because of that line out issue. However, if you plug your speaker into the headphone jack, which this iPad still has, certain Bluetooth speakers, depending on how the profile set up, or AirPlay to like a HomePod speaker, you will be able to adjust the volume with this 2003 remote. So I think this is great. I've waited a long time to get this adapter and to make this video, and I'm so happy that it turned out to work perfectly with no issues. Unfortunately, lightning devices are the end of the line because Apple's 30 pin to lightning adapter does not work with their lightning to USB-C adapter at all. And I've talked about that in previous videos. So the lightning devices are the end of the line. Now I had an iPhone 14 for a few years. That's the last lightning device Apple made. And in my family, we hand them down and eventually I'll get that phone back in about three years and it will inevitably be on the last version of the iOS that it can support, whether it's 28 or 29, who knows at this point. So maybe in three years, I'll come back and make a video on 30 pin and nine pin accessories, and we'll see if they work to the bitter end on the last lightning product Apple made with the last version of the iOS that it supports. So keep an eye out for that video, maybe in about three years. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.